We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this holy calling. There are many in the world who are getting lost, but you have called us to come and commune with you. We appreciate you, our Holy Father. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for drawing us close and closer to yourself day by day. We ask your spirit to come and distribute to our hearts your word that giveth life, so that we will have the life and have it in full, and rejoicing will be our portion forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shout hallelujah. I want to appreciate our vicar and all the cathedral priests for this great opportunity given to me. Climbing this pupit is not by right, it's by grace. Give a clap offering for all of them. Today we are considering the topic that says the blessedness of returning to God the blessedness of returning to God. The text is Hosea chapter 14. Hosea 14, I will start the reading from the first verse. O God, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So we will render the caps of our lips. Our church shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the works of our hands. Ye are our gods. For, in the, for indeed the fatherless findeth mercy. I will hear their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as a Jew unto Israel. He shall grow as a lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the holy tree and his smell as Lebanon. Verse 7. They that dwell under, the, under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as a corn and grow as a vine. The scent thereof shall be as a vine of Lebanon. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessedness is a state of being happy and spiritually prosperous with joy, life, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward condition Mark this word, regardless of their outward conditions. It is also a state of supreme happiness. The word blessedness is coined from blessed, having, which means having a sacred nature connected with God, enjoyable in a way that gives you a sense of peace or a feeling of freedom from anxiety or pain. Then we have this word here in our text, return. Return means to come or to go to a place again, to come back or go back again. It's the art of going back to an activity, job, situation, etc. It is the art of starting to do something again after stopping. So when you say, you want to return, it means you have been in that particular place before. For those of us who have not come to church today, if you say, I want to return to church, it is wrong. But since you have been here, and maybe in the evening time you say, you now say, I want to return to church, you are correct. Is that true? So when the topic of today is saying the blessedness of returning to God, it means we have been with God before. 
and now we are making up our minds to return back to him. Or we have returned to him, but without our minds. Sometimes in classes or in church, the teacher may say, are you with me? And people will say, yes. Then you see, you may see another person in the same place who will not say yes. Because maybe the person is there physically, but the mind is not there. So, the truth is, when somebody is present with God physically, but the mind, the heart is not there, that person has not equally returned to God. So, what we are talking about today, what we are looking at is both returning to God in body, in spirit, and in soul. And beyond that, even with our own belongings, all that we have acquired. Let us look at Jewel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. It says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sandy calamity. There is a word I outline in my Bible, and it says, return to me with all your heart. Return to me with what? With all your heart. It means that even when people go to God and confess their faith in God, if the whole of their heart is not for God, it means they have not yet returned. If you have truth that is as big as this house, if truth can materialize and the measurement of truth is as big as this house, by the time you drop a little lie on top of it, is it still remaining truth? It ceases to become truth and to remain truth. Because when truth is mixed with lies, no matter how small, it no longer remains truth. So, even as we worship God, as we confess ourselves as Christians, we must, with the whole of our hearts, return back to God. And from our Bible study today, the topic is, who knows the topic here? The topic of today's Bible study. This is a problem. We have Bible study every morning, but you have only few because some people have refused to give God the whole of their time. The whole of their time. So, the topic of today is spiritual decline. And we say, we all agree that the church of today, the church of today is declining spiritually because of unfaithfulness. And there is a call upon us as individuals and as a church that it is time to return back to God with the whole of our hearts, even with our time, with our time. I want to ask a question. How have I, as a person, returned to God? How have you, as a church member, returned to God? We have people who come to God with the whole of their loads. Because Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will do what? And I will give you rest. Some come to God because of the heavy laden they are carrying, because of the heavy load. And when they come, they complain and tell God their problems, some will even end up going home with the same problem. That person will not receive this blessedness. There are others, when they come to God, they succeed in dropping the load and also agree to be children of the kingdom. But on the other hand, they fail to live as children of the kingdom. One thing about salvation, what we have to understand is that salvation is a free gift of God to humanity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Have everlasting life. We have it. We don't earn it. We just have it. It is a gift. We don't earn it but we receive it as a gift. But the day we receive this gift of salvation... 
we, that day, our work begins. This is the whole of the work that we have to do. When we return to God and God receives us as his children and adopts us as, as sons and daughters of the kingdom and make us kings and priests in his house, he gives us a garment of righteousness. And from that moment, we have a huge work to do. And the work is keeping the garment clean. It was given to us free of charge. But we have a responsibility to keep it clean at every point in time. We have to cleanse it, wash it in the blood of the Lamb. So that when the one that gives us the garment will come, he will not tell us, well done, good and faithful servants. We do not merit this kingdom by our own work. Somebody died for us and paid for it. Now, we have been called together as ecclesia, as a church, they called out. And now that we have been called together, we are told by God that you are the light of what? Of the world. I wrote something recently that you may be very good on the pupils as a preacher, but if your character does not preach Christ, you are still a pagan. Is that true? Until we return to God with the whole of our hearts. The Bible says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength. All, 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 all. Christianity begins with the word from the pulpit, but it doesn't end here. It ends with the totality of your life as a Christian. Until people see us and begin to see us as true representatives of Christ, we have not started and we cannot receive this blessedness. Now, this blessedness is in twofold. Peter asked Jesus a question in Mark, Mark chapter 10, verse 28. I read, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. When Peter looked at his former business, where he was earning something, taking care of his family. A time came that he was no longer earning anything as income. Peter has to ask Jesus, Jesus, all of us, one day you told us at different times, follow me, follow me, and we followed you. Now that we have followed you, what is our reward? What are you giving us in return? Because there are people who are enjoying their lives in the world. This may be a question that some of us here are asking. And until we answer this question correctly, we can become discouraged. Because even the same passage in verse 31, Jesus said, many who are first shall be what? Shall be last. And many who are last shall become first. Now, this is the answer Jesus gave to Peter. And Jesus answered and said, verse 29, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that had left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands and with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. You have two categories. Of these things Jesus mentioned. Number one is the reward we are going to get here on earth when we serve him, when we return to him with the whole of our hearts. And then, after this world, eternal life. If I may ask, how many of us still have heaven in view? Heaven in view. For the past one month, how many of us have talked to God that God, the day I will leave this world, please make sure I am rapture worthy. Make sure I am in a good condition with you. This is the whole essence of life. A still born child is better than a Christian who lived in church and grew old, run all the activities in church and still end up in hell. It is better not to be born than to be born and end up in hell. 
We don't merit heaven. Jesus gave it to us free of charge. He said, now return to me with the whole of your heart. And I am going to give you something that money cannot buy. On earth, he said, if you follow me, you will have houses, you will have sisters, you will have all these things. Money, prosperity will be your portion. Because I wish you above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Even as I so do what? As I so prosper. So prosperity is in two folds. There is the material prosperity and spiritual prosperity. Our attention many times is, is, is being diverted from the spiritual prosperity. Witches will always be in town. They will even always be in your workplaces. They shouldn't get the whole of your attention. The devil is getting so much praise, so much glory. Many of us even call the name of the devil more than the name of God. Is that true? Until we return back to God and stop running after miracles, stop running after prosperity, we will fail on the last day. I remember some time ago, I used to be very, very sick. I was in secondary school, catering for myself. So I used to also to be very, very unhappy. One day, I prayed, as I used to pray before, that God, why me? Why this sickness? Why this sickness? God had to tell me a secret. That I have used many ways to call you, you refuse to listen. But when I tried sickness, I discovered that you drew closer to me. I gave you more sickness, you drew closer to me. So I decided to use this medium to call you. And I tell you, that time, any time I want to go out, I commit myself into the hand of God. And in the evening, I will ask myself, where have I gone wrong? Where did I got it wrong today? God, am I still right with you? I have the conclusion that even if I lose everything in this world, at least let me make heaven now. You can't lose two things at the same time. There are people who have this world as their heaven. There are some who have this world as their hair. The passage we read, verse 13, Jesus said, with persecutions, what you shall get as a Christian, as a believer. If you get the persecutions of this world, if I get the persecutions of this world and end up in hell, I be in hell with people like Gaddafi, Idi Amin of Uganda, people, some of people like Abasha, who stole our money and we are suffering today. And they will now ask me, Pastor, are you here too? It is painful. I have resolved that for the whole of my life, I will speak the truth. It is witchcraft to me and the highest level of corruption so far. If I take your offering, collect your tithe, you so see it on my life. I live in a good house, built by church money, and I see you going to hell. And I refuse to tell you the truth. It is worse than witchcraft. Because there shall be fight in hell. There are members, church members, who will gather and beat up their pastors very well. Don't clap, don't clap. You are encouraging these people. Many of you are encouraging these people. You are encouraging them. And today in church, if you are ready to speak the truth, if you want to speak the truth, remove your intestines. And be ready to go hungry. But it's better to be fed by ravens than to be fed with fitting hands. It is worse than witchcraft. If I see you about falling into a pit and I fail to warn you, and the Lord has told me you are a shepherd to these people, warn them. Whether they go to the Zika, whether they hear you or not, do what? Warn them. If I fail to sound my warning that danger is coming, it is corruption in the highest order.
There are people from different denominations here. If you are here and your pastor don't tell you the truth, you can open your breast and draw the waist. He will still pray for you and speak in tongues. I will not tell you to dress well. He encourages you to do evil. If you are here, run from that church. He doesn't love you. Love speaks the truth. As a church, we must turn back to where we are coming from. We have journeyed too far from the truth. Miracles are supposed to follow us. We don't supposed to pursue them. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow, shall follow you. These signs, they will follow. Let them follow on their own. If we do the right thing, they will follow. Some of, I want to call on men of God all over the world that it is time to preach the truth. Today is about miracle, physical prosperity, physical prosperity. The truth has died. The truth is now dead. And it's painful that men of God, many of us, carry shovel, spade, and bury the truth alive. Have we returned to God? Have you? Me, I am repenting every day. I repent on every day. Because if I fail, there is something the Lord told me about three years ago. That look, I am warning you now, you think this thing is small. If you fail to change, I will cast you into hell. I will not change my standard because of my love for you. A lot of attention had been diverted. Just this week, let me not mention that. May the Lord help us. The church, our relationship with God as a church and as individuals is depicted with marriage. Jesus tried to describe the relationship he has with us and he used marriage to describe it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, we are not going to read. To 33, 33. 22 to 33. And it says, Just as a man will leave his father and his mother, cleave to his wife and become one flesh, love the woman, care for her, just the way he cares for his own body, so also the Lord cleanses the church purifies her and presents her to himself as a bride. If we want to dis describe and discuss our relationship with God and you use marriage, you are very correct. I mean marriage according to God's ordinances. And you will agree with me that many who say, I have returned to God, they still belong to different secret societies. Someone was telling me this month, a very young boy, that after I received one prophecy, I had to run for my life and I wasted time and money. When he got to the fraternity, I don't want to call his name, he said, they were telling me, showing me pastors, apostles, bishops who belong here too. And they were telling me, you see that big man of God? He's our member. He's your fraternal brother. You see this one? You see that rich man? He is our member. Do we still have people like that in this church? Do we have people like that all over the world? We have to return to God with the whole of our hearts. Whether we keep our life or not, we will lose it one day. But if you decide to lose it for the sake of Jesus and his gospel... You will get it back because Jesus is the giver of life. Praise the Lord. If you say you are married, you wear a wedding ring. You have NAVDAC number. For every marriage, the government gives you a specific number that no other person in the world can get. Telling you that your marriage is unique. Your marriage is licensed. You are not sharing this license with anybody. Yet in the night, you still drink. 10, 8, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12, 
If you pass the night, you are outside. You are not married. You are still single. You if you are a woman, you don't respect your husband. Even to the stage that a very deteriorated state that somebody can see you outside and call you a babe. You look her to, can I take you out? With even with the shame upon the shame of your wedding ring, you are still single. You are not married. You are not married. If we say we are Christians, yet fail to live up to the standard of Christianity, we are not yet Christians. Because Christianity is Christ's like life. Before we round up, John chapter 14, verse 1 following. I want to encourage as many who are running this race with the whole of their hearts. You are running, you don't want to look back, people are laughing at you. I encourage you, run. Run, don't look back. The world is fading away, the earth is fading. As we see it now, it is fading. Without AC, we don't sleep. The earth is fading. You have money, your heart is in trouble. You are poor, your heart is in trouble. The only place we have peace is heaven. John 14, 1, following. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I, Jesus, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Bow down your head, let's pray. If anybody comes into this world and yet fail to fulfill the mandate of God and does not receive this blessedness, that person is worse than a stillborn child. Talk to God about your life. Tell the Lord, I'm returning to you with the whole of my heart. Accept me to yourself. Forgive all unrighteousness in my life. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Purify my garment as I dip it in the blood of a lamb today. Lord, wash me and make me whole. Tell the Lord anything that will make me to lose heaven. Father, please take it out of my life. Round up your prayer. Father, we are grateful to you for your word that we have heard today. We ask that our hearts will be blessed by this word. May it not stand against us on the day of judgment. But on the day of judgment, let us remember this day when we fully hand over our lives, the whole of our hearts to God. Lord Jesus, reward our faithfulness. No matter how small, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.